Hey, what's up? How you doing? Justin Carney here. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so I just came back from vacation. Today it's July 23rd, 2019. And I just came back from Philadelphia, which is my hometown. I'm living in Austin right now. That's where I'm at right now. Um, just came back. I had a 10 day vacation with my wife and my son. And we went and visited family. We went to the beach, it was great. We went to the Philadelphia Zoo, it was awesome. I got to catch up on some baseball. It was incredible. Um, anyway, uh, I just got back and I haven't played my bass in 10 days. And so I got to my instrument and it felt like an instrument I've never even played before. So um, in this circumstance, this has happened to me many times and I've gotten frustrated. But I've decided that what I'm gonna do is um, specific things to help me get onto my feet or I should say, you know, get, get the playing as soon as I can. Uh, I put those exercises on the board, the ones that I worked on, and maybe we can go over some of them. I'll show you what I did. I've only been practicing for about an hour and a half today, maybe a little less, so I need to get some more practice in. Um, but I'll show you what it is that I was working on. Uh, if you see me scratching my arm, it's because yesterday when I got back on the bus ride to my car, I got bit by a fire ant right here on the arm, and uh, so my arm is swollen up. But uh, I took some antihistamine, and I'm doing my best here, it's gonna be fine. Uh, anyway, so first thing that I decided to work on was the vomit technique uh, and the alternating fingers technique. Now, if you've tuned into the Kill the Bass podcast before, you've heard me talk about vomit. Um, you can find people doing the exercises online too. Um, it's basically, if you were to start in half position on the bass, here, let me move my music stand. If you were to start in half position, you can go all the way up the neck and all the way back down. Now, because I hadn't played in a while, typically what I do is I use the bow so I can get my get my fingers nice and strong. But I decided not to do that today. Uh, and the reason is because I've been influenced by a couple um, things online. Um, Jason Heath, the great bassist and educator, Put out a, a shared a video from a bass player based out of I think it was New Orleans I forget his name I'm going to look this up but it was uh, it was called Bach Religion you could look it up Bach Religion it was the ties between Bach and um, bebop it talks about how the music is the musics are very similar uh, and it was made specifically for bass anyway um, I was really influenced by that and it talks about practicing Bach music, especially the cello suites, pizzicato. So that was cool. I didn't get to practice the box suites yet. I uh, am planning on doing that, but I did decide that I wasn't going to use my bow when I practiced my vomit today. So I used my alternating pizzicato fingers. So what I do is this. I start here on A, and then I go down here to G sharp, A, and then I go up. As you can see here. Now with this hand, I don't know if you can see it, You can see I'm going all the way up the chromatic scale. You'll see people practicing it online where they just do the A major scale. And you can find a Jeff Bradisek video where he's doing going in between the fingers like this. Now, that is all great, but for me, I'm practicing just getting this finger warmed up. Okay? And then I do each of the fingers. Now I do three. I do the first finger, second finger, and then I do this, these two together. Now if I were to start here, you can see I'm basically using leading, excuse me, basically leading with my pinky here. Okay? When I get up to the octave, you can see that's pretty much where I transition to my third finger. Right around here. Anyway, once I'm finished doing that, I go two octaves up. There it is. All right, and then I come back. It's a little bit harder to get the notes to sustain using the pinky, especially up here. So, if you want to use the bow, that's fine too. That's a great exercise to get these fingers kind of 
primed for what you're going to be doing. Now, there's two other things that I do. I do an exercise that I learned from a video from Michael Klinghoffer, who's he, uh, he, he wrote a book called Do um, uh, Mr. Carr, Can You Tell Me How to Drive a Double Bass? And now, I've never read the book, but he's got this great series of videos online where he talks about all of these things. Uh, his main point and his main purpose is the bass is either really easy to play or impossible to play. And so that's his philosophy, which I think is a great philosophy. But anyway, he has this technique where he puts his fingers off on the bass like this and does these pull-offs, just like that. All right? And this is another great way to get these fingers on your left hand stronger and used to going to the instrument. And so I obviously do this. It hurts a little bit, especially if you haven't played for a few days or if you've never done this exercise before. It really hurts your fingers, but that's the type of pain that you want. This is good pain. It's not muscular pain, it's just superficial pain. Anyway, once I've done all three fingers on this string, then what I like to do is you can use the bow. I actually use my fingers again. I do what's called uh, Max's ring thing, I think is what it's called, or Max's magic. Uh, it sounds like this. Basically, you're in hand position. And uh, this is the exercise. It's one, two, three, two, one, three, two, three. Okay, and then you just repeat that. Now, what I decide to do is go all the way up the string doing this. Because it's getting my fingers primed to be in all the notes. You're gonna play all the notes on your bass, plus you're gonna work on all the fingerings in a position. I'm not shifting. But it's gonna really get my fingers, and it's gonna get the string under my fingers. I messed that up. And now also what I've been doing is focusing on the pizzicato too. I'm gonna to do a video more on pizzicato later, but notice how I'm trying to be considerate of leaving my fingers down here. And now there's a couple different techniques that I use for pizzicato, but like I said, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna focus on those. Enough. Okay, so you definitely wanna check your intonation too, as you can see. I lost my place because I was thinking. So here I'm in uh, second position. And now that should be the same. You really want to focus on keeping your fingers similar to the way they were when they're up in hand position. As far as spacing. Now another thing is too, something that I've personally been focusing on is trying to keep my elbow in line with the neck. Because if I do that, it doesn't necessarily mean up or down. It's just kind of, instead of having my elbow back here, have it kind of like, at least on this, like lined up perfectly or on this side. It kind of gives you leverage. And, it, and it's a little awkward at first. I don't want to speed, make sure. And so there's a few things that I'm paying attention to. Where my elbow is, how my fingers feel, how this hand is. And it's like a meditation where if you focus on all three of the things, you're gonna get the most out of it. But if you focus on anything else, like speaking, it becomes harder and you're not focusing. So if you're doing this, all three of these things, then your mind is fully engaged. Uh, and then when your mind is fully engaged on what it is you're doing, that's how you're gonna get the most out of it. Whereas if you're doing two out of those three things and your mind is wandering, then you're not gonna get quite as much. But it's a practice, like just like meditation, where you're gonna be keep you're gonna keep doing it. All right, so that's the first thing, and I did that on all the strings, okay? So now, after that is done, I do what I call the AFE, or what's called the alternate fingering exercise. All right, now this is a worksheet that I gained from a teacher. Uh, somebody gave it to me, so I can't share it with you without that person's permission. So I'm going to be looking into that, uh, and I have the file, and I. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get the permission, and if I get the permission, I'll share it with you guys, and I'll put a link below, and I'll put the person's name on it because they deserve full credit. Anyway, um, this is a great exercise that is has you going along with the metronome and using alternate fingers. The AFE is the alternate finger exercise. And so it's written only on the D and the G string, but I do it on the all the strings. 